What is up? We are back playing around with uh, Mike's YZ again today. So we got a little mod here from our friends at Elba. Ooh. Airbox spacer. Dang, what does that do? So this actually spaces the cover of the airbox out away from the, the main body of the airbox. And I think the theory is the cover's a little bit too close to the velocity stacks, whatever you want to call them, the intakes on the inside of the box, and it kind of pinches that airflow off. So by spacing the cover out, you get some better airflow. And they see like six horsepower on a dyno with this thing. So it's uh, it's impressive. It seems a little too good to be true. So we're going to find out if it is today or not. We uh, are going to do some baseline runs. We actually did those already. Um, Nick will show you those here in a minute. Um, get some other machines and on the radar, get a speed. We're going to pop this thing on and then see if we can get any improvement. So. When this thing showed up to the house, Therese said it looked like a funny piece of toast. It doesn't not look like a that or a big boot. <laughs> right. Like it's a like, Christmas boot. Uh, so we're going to see if it makes any power. So this is what happens when Mike spends a bunch of money at Alba Racing, and then we say, hey, bud, give us some free stuff. <gasps> Boom! So this is going to turn into like a, like a really a, a YXZ NA build, just to see how much we can get out of a pretty, you know, stockish YXZ with mostly bolt-on mods. Mike's YXZ runs really hard for what it is, so it's got an exhaust on it and a tune, and other than that, it's pretty stock, and it's really, really fast um, for that, that much work. So we're going to do this, and then uh, after that, we're going to do some more stuff, and we're going to see just how fast uh, any YXZ can go. Nice. So let's, let's do, it. do it. Let's do it. Sidebysideblog.com garage. Okay, so we're doing some uh, runs here with the radar gun before the airbox lid spacer. We caught a 61. 61 mile an hour. Let's see it. Let's see it. 61 is what I add as well. 61. Okay. All right. Impressive. We'll, we should do a couple more Runs just good. to make sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Going. I'll run one more. How did it feel? How did it feel? Good. No, All right. Good. Rebel limiter takeoff. Everything shifted good. Sounds good. Hell yeah. Do a second one to confirm a speed close to it. Yeah. Yep. Listen to that rev limiter. Just killing fucking machines, dude. 60. 60. We got a 60. Yep. Maybe traction yep. loss. Maybe it wasn't in the right lane. I don't know. Let's put that spacer on, dude. Got a 60. 60 mile an hour. All right, Mike, what's the setup looking like here? What are you doing, bud? Uh, there's like a billion and a half bolts or screws that are in this lid you gotta take out first. Okay. And then it comes off, and then you obviously have your secondary filter up in here, which is gonna stay there. But with the Alba kit, it comes with a screw that holds in the very bottom. You put a screw in, it'll hold that secondary filter so you know it doesn't obviously pop out and move because you're spacing this lid so far back. Okay. And then you don't have to ever put this center one back in after you do that. So okay. remember that when you're putting your install, don't put that back in or try to. And what size you got here? 10 mil, I assume? Uh, I think they're actually like 8. 8, eight mil. mil. That's there fun. 8 mil, and I can't remember if there's 12 or 13 of these things looks like. Dang. There's a lot. All right, guys. Okay. Looks like you're almost there, huh? Yep, we got all the screws out, so Mike's just going to pop the cover off now. It's going to come out the bottom. It's a little tight. Basically, just go ahead and yank it. Oh, okay. There's your secondary filter. That's cool. Yep. So you can probably get a decent shot from in here too. So you see the intakes. So that is the issue right there. So when you put that cover on, it's real close to the end of these, right? Mm -hmm. So if you space that out and just give it a little more room to flow, apparently make some power. Dang. Alba's got it figured out, man. Yep. It's like a puzzle, dude. Right. He's got to play a little bit. There you go. She's going to go in just like that, man. Wow. Look at that. It clicks right in place. Damn. That's a quality unit. Nice. There's the attached uh, screws yep. that came with the kit. All new hardware. Obviously, you need longer screws when you put that big spacer in there, but it's all provided. Pretty easy. And it's stainless, too. That's yeah, nice stuff. Nice touch. So, you got the lid off. You're going to space this thing out right. There's a hole in the center that you're not going to use anymore. Um, and you got to plug that, obviously. So, if you leave that open, it just sucks air into the air box unfiltered. It's a, it's a bad deal. So, 
Um, in the kit, there's a bolt with this felt washer, another washer, and a lock nut, and this is what you use to plug that hole. So we're just going to drop it in, something like that, push this through there, tighten up the washer and the nut on it. And all this is in the instructions, but you don't want to forget that part. All right, so we're putting the spacer in. Um, this is a, a tricky thing to do because, you know, it's a pretty pretty wide spacer and it's tight getting the cover off to begin with. So the trick here is to put the spacer in first, but not to seat it on the air box, right? Just kind of lay it over the corner and that'll give you the space to feed the cover up in and then you can sort of put it all together. That's the idea anyways. I don't want to ruin any surprises here, Mike, but it went smoother. Okay. No, last I didn't time. touch. I didn't touch a thing. <laughs> I just as soon as you got up here, the corner was kind of hitting, so I'm just kind of. That's Mike's fault, by the way. Yeah. I mean, we all. That went in pretty well. All right, so we got the spacer in. Um, I guess the only other thing to be aware of is you've got this breather, you know, this breather box, this crankcase breather that comes up here, and when you space the air box cover out, it gets real tight. So what we did was we were able to leave it mounted in the stock location. We just took the bracket, that bracket right there, and bent it just a little bit. You can see how it's curved now, and that got us clearance. You know, we still got clearance to the frame. We got clearance to the air box lid. Not a big deal. So it's in. We're just going to button up. we got to put covers back on, and then uh, we're going to take this thing for a rip. Oh, yeah. Hey, it's Luis. Thing runs good. I'll be curious to see if there's a measurable difference, you know, with uh, with what we've got. Relatively cheap radar gun. But This is a bush now. It's this a good unit. A good unit. Good unit. All right, here we go. All right, so here we are with the speed run after the air, air intake space here. Okay, 62. Wow, that's good. 62 on the shoes, dude. So that's a one mile an hour gain, man. Yeah, that sucker rips good. Hey, man, nice work. 62. I went a little faster. Yeah. Which in the same amount of distance, what, a little over 300 foot? Yeah. How do you feel? I think it's 500 foot, actually. Dude, it feels good. The nice thing I noticed, it pulled power right in the rubble there. Nice. Yeah, I mean, it would definitely save us if anybody's looking for cheap, you know, something not crazy expensive. I mean, I like the mid gate, like when you actually hit it from a roll, I think it does feel a little smoother. A little okay, it's got more mid range power. Yeah. yeah, I haven't seen the dyno graph from it, but you know, who knows where it makes the power at. Obviously, peak, but yeah, if it makes more mid too, that'd be good. Yeah, because most of their advertisements, I think, are like peak horsepower, but then like the sheet you look at, I thought they said the mid it picks up a lot. Nice. But so you can you can feel that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, I would say I'd definitely, like I said, if you're sitting there cruising about six grand, you hit it, it seems like it picks up faster. Nice. So, yeah. Well, let's uh, race it against the next three real quick. He says this, just for the record, he's going to try two wheel. Man, it hooked up pretty well in two wheel. I don't know what Mike was in. Mike was in four, you saw it run. Yeah, Mike Reed's really looking to get it. Dang, that's close. That is friggin' close. Man, call me crazy. That thing seems a little faster. Mike, thoughts? I mean, I guess I didn't notice it until as much we got to, like, doing a rolling was really the big one I just noticed. Yeah. There was not as much pull as before. No. Because normally that thing on the big end is going. Yeah. And he was really close. Super close. So, I mean, uh, you guys were rolling. That was a good rolling race. I was yeah. like watching, uh, that was a good race. Like some real street race. Real competitive shit. Yeah. <laughs> the last actual dead dig, we both 
seemed like we're both good on the takeoffs. Everything's yep. good. It seemed like I jumped you out. You had to play catch up. Yep. Yep. And it was like what half a length in the end. Yeah, maybe. Yep. Something like that. So it looks like it might be more mid-range gain than anything, boys. <laughs> yeah, it, it's definitely gained something somewhere because it's it's quicker for sure. I don't know so much top end, but mid-range, you're freaking. Yeah, it's pulling. You're pulling the pony, bud. Yep. Very happy. You're letting the horses sing, fella. Very happy. You're really letting them eat. I'm trying. You're, you're giving her good. the juice. <laughs> I have no response now. So hey, uh, thank you to Alba, right? Mike, you gotta say thank you to Mike, sure. say Alba, thank you, what the thank shit? Thank you very much. Obviously, Nate, you're the man. That's all, that's that's all you have to say, like, poor guy? Jeez <laughs> Louise. <laughs> Until the next mods, I guess. Good race, buds, good race. See ya.